Hey guys, what's up, how's it going? My name is Robin. Welcome back again, once again to the YouTube channel. In today's video, um, I mentioned a couple days ago that I would do a full throw uh, portfolio update and I talk about all the different stocks and I share with you guys my different holdings and whatnot. I, I mentioned that in a couple videos uh, a little while back that I was gonna do that. So in today's video, that's what we're actually gonna focus on. We're gonna jump inside the portfolio. I'll give you guys an update like usual on how things are going. Um, but in today's video, we're really gonna dive in and we're gonna spend a lot more time talking about each individual stock. I'm not gonna, I'm, Gonna try not to make it too, too long and not too um, dragged out, but I'll kind of go over each stock I have, my different shares, how much income we make, and I'll share some thoughts about these different stocks and whatnot as we go through the entire portfolio. So I'm not gonna waste too much time in today's video. Um, I'm gonna jump into it right away, but before we do, I just wanna say really quickly, um, if you guys wanna sign up for Wolf Soul Trade, I do have my affiliate links in the description of the video. You guys can check that out if you want. Uh, but other than that, guys, if you guys do enjoy this video, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up uh, as it really helps, but um, that's pretty much it. So let's jump inside the portfolio um, and let's see how our portfolio is doing and let's check out what stocks that I actually hold. All right, guys, what's up? How's it going? Here's my portfolio. Um, I'll do a quick little update on how the stocks and the overall portfolio has been doing and then we'll jump inside the portfolio and talk about each individual stock in just a second here. Um, but so far, our portfolio, if you guys are brand new, it's a TFSA, which is 100% focused on Canadian dividend stocks with a little bit of US stocks um, that are div dividend growth based stocks as well. So once again, main focus is Canadian dividend stocks that have growth with a little bit of US as well. And that's kind of what we're putting inside our TFSA here. And that's kind of what we built this portfolio to be over time. And we're still in the process of building it. But that's kind of what we're going for. So we have $22,000, just approaching $23 inside the TFSA. Um, we started the portfolio um, in January of 2020, the portfolio was literally at zero dollars, and this is where we got from um, since then over the course of about a little bit over a year. Um, just you know, saving up my money, putting it back in, reinvesting that money, and just seeing that compound growth. So, over the past day, um, this morning, it is um, almost noon here on the 5th of March. Um, we can see here that we're up 1% in the portfolio already. So pretty good day for the portfolio so far, up $227 um, just from this morning. So that's pretty decent um, rise over the past little while. Over the past week, we are down at negative 1%. Um, so we've seen some gains, some losses overall. Um, over the past month, we're up 3%, which is about $600 over the past three months. We are up 5%, which is about $1,000. So once again, lots of growth coming um, over the beginning of this year. And it seems to kind of, kind of be trending up overall. You guys can see here, you know, in the beginning of the year, we were kind of sitting at here and just kind of just trending upwards as we put more money inside the portfolio and as our stocks have been growing. Over the past year, we're up 9%, which is almost $2,000. And then if we go all time, we are up once again, 9%, which is about $1,900, almost $2,000. The other day we actually hit $2,000 in terms of growth on the portfolio, which is a first for the account. Um, but obviously we kind of, you know, dipped back a bit, that kind of happens, right? Um, but I'm pretty, I'm super happy because the portfolio is approaching all times, all time highs. And we're really just focusing on putting as much money as possible um, back in the account and keep that money, just keep growing on a regular basis. All right, so for this part of the video, I'm gonna focus on, once again, kind of going through each individual stock. I'll give you guys my thoughts about them. A lot of cool things have been going on over the past couple of days in terms of the market, in terms of US stocks, and in terms of currencies. Um, so I'm gonna kind of briefly talk about those in this video. Uh, but as you guys can see here, the way Wealth Silver Trade works, if you guys are unfamiliar, I'm using the desktop version of the app. We have the actual stocks and the tickers here on the left. So we have AQN, which stands for Algonquin Pound Utilities. We have BIP. Dot UN, which stands for Brookfield, Brookfield Infrastructure Partners LP, and so on and so forth. So this is the name of the stock. Here we have the today, today's price, and then here we have the total value, basically, which says how much of each stock I have inside my portfolio. We have um, the price of those stocks in total, and then the, the number of shares underneath here. And then on the right side, right side, we have the all-time return, which is the dollar amount, and then the percentage. So kind of just to walk you guys through here, if you guys are completely new, um, here we have Algonquin Pound Utilities Corp. Today's price is $19. The total value inside of my portfolio is $401, which is 21 shares. And then the total return is negative 12%. Um, so that kind of just gives you guys, if you guys are brand new, um, that kind of just um, shows you guys what's going on here. And then this number at the top here that we just went through is basically taking all those stocks, adding them up together, and giving you guys like um, everything kind of averaged out there. So I hope that kind of makes sense for anybody who's brand new um, to investing and whatnot. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comment section of this video. So the first stock we're gonna talk about today is AQN. Algonquin Power and Utilities is a pretty known company in Canada. It's a pretty good power and utilities company. They've done quite well, um, but it's kind of interesting. Over the past month, this stock is actually down 13% 
which is kind of interesting. I'm not too I'm not too sure what's going on with that, but we've seen a, a nice little dip here. And this is a stock I've been buying for a long time. Over the past three months, we can see it's down seven percent, and over the past year, it's actually down fifteen percent. So 2020 uh, 2021 has not been a really good year felt for the stock but I think this is okay because I think this is a good long-term buy so if you guys are looking for a good energy based stock to buy I think Algonquin Power and Utilities could be really maybe something that might be worth buying over the past years we can past five years when you see that there is that 80 percent growth so i do think this little dip is might just be temporarily kind of thing like as we see kind of you know stocks do uh, from time to time so i think this would be a pretty good stock to buy if anybody is looking for a nice canadian based power and utilities corp as you guys can see here, our holding is 21 shares, total value $400, and our all-time performance is down uh, 12%. So uh, this actually might be a really interesting stock to buy right now. It pretty, be in a pretty good position, I think, and they are a really good company. Um, so definitely, definitely look worth looking at. And we currently, this currently represents about 1.8% of my portfolio, which is not very much. And you'll notice that a lot of these individual stocks don't represent a lot. I actually have the most, most of the my, my portfolio actually in ETFs and whatnot. And we'll talk about those as we go further down the list. So the next stock we have is Brookfield Infrastructure Partners LP. I bought this for some diversification inside the portfolio. It's also a very fastly growing um, dividend and stock appreciation based stock. As you guys can see here, over the past five years, it is up 100%. So basically doubled its value over the past five years, which is really cool. It also has a really good dividend growth and whatnot. And it's just a good infrastructure based um, stock that's doing really well. And I don't have a lot of stocks like this inside my portfolio. So that was one of the main reasons I bought this stock. Over the past week, this stock is about 0%. Over the past month, it's down 5%. Over the past three months, it's down about 1%. So we started buying this, I think it was towards the end of 2021. So this is still, once again, one of those stocks inside our portfolio that isn't performing really well, but I do believe long-term it's gonna do well. And we can see over the past year, it is down once again, 9%. But with a stock that's growing up 100% over the past five years, I, I think this little dip is, is, is once again, representing probably a good time to buy. We currently own about five shares, which is $325. Um, and once again, represents about 1.5% of our portfolio, which is relatively low. Um, once again, I'm setting it up so that our ETFs, which buy the entire market, generally generally they do well, they, they're more predictable. And then these individual stocks, we can kind of play with them, we can have fun with them. Maybe some of them do well, maybe some of them don't. But at the end of the day, at least it's not completely destroying our portfolio. Or during dips, we're not seeing like massive drops. And uh, that's kind of how I like to do my investing, especially since we're focusing on a dividend-based portfolio, right? We want that long-term growth, that long-term income. And I got a cool little tool I'm going to show you guys later on in the video that kind of um, goes over that. So the next stock we have is Canadian National Railway Corp, Corp which is CNR. So show, I'm sure most of you guys are familiar with CNR. Um, over the past month, this stock is up 4%. Over the past three months, it's about zero. Over the past year, it is up 21%. So this stock had a really, really, really good um, year last year during the pandemic. And that's because, you know, everybody needed things to be shipped everywhere. You know, there's anything in, in regards to like a lot of the shipping companies did really, really well. And CNR really is like the backbone of the Canadian economy. We can't really function really well without it. So I do think that these railroad companies are doing, are probably going to do really well. You know, and they've just been steadily growing over the past couple of years. And last year was a really good year for this company, up 21%. And over the past five years, up 77%. And the cool thing about this stock, it's mostly a growth-based stocks, uh, but it also has been really ramping up its dividend growth over the past couple of years. Um, so this is kind of why I'm adding this stock, because it has really good stock appreciation, and the dividend growth has been going up like over like, I think it's like 12 or 15% per year or something crazy like that. So they are getting that nice dividend growth, which kind of gives us, you know, I think over time it's going to turn into a good dividend stock. It just is kind of in that growing stage right now. So we currently don't have a lot of shares because it is a bit of an expensive shock, a bit expensive stock, but we have three shares of CNR, total value $417. And it is once again, about 1.88% of our portfolio. And once again, these three stocks I talked about so far aren't doing very well. Um, especially Algonquin Power and Utilities is actually down 12% um, in our portfolio, which I think is actually the lowest stock right now. Uh, we'll see when we get through the list here. Um, going uh, going down more here, some of our better performing stocks here are Enbridge. Enbridge is a very interesting company. Over the past month, they are up 0%. Over the past three months, they're up 5%. Over the past year, they're currently down about 13%. So, you know, um, I would say they're still trending downwards. They did get a bit of a boost. Um, as you guys can see here, they got a bit of a boost 
um, in the past three months or so, you know, and, and uh, but you know, they've been definitely trending downwards over the past couple of years. So a lot of people buy the stock because of its high dividend yield, but it also has a lot of debt and whatnot. So it's kind of interesting. Um, I don't go too crazy with Enbridge. I bought a couple shares way back in the day. I do hold it in some of the big ETFs. So that's the reason why I'm not really buying it. But if you kind of, if you guys kind of want a higher risk, but higher reward stock, Ambridge definitely could be something you could look at. We currently have about three shares, which is only $100, but once again, I hold most of it in the ETF. Currently up 9%, so that's pretty good so far, and it does have a very nice dividend yield, and my percentage of my portfolio is 0.6%, is so once again, but it's actually higher than that. In fact, most of these are actually higher than this because most of these are in some of our ETFs, so I think it's important to point that out as well. Some of them are, some of them aren't. Um, next up we have is Fortis, which is another energy and utilities-based company. As you guys can see, I do have a lot of those inside this portfolio, and that's because these are some of the best companies in Canada, you know, especially dividend growth stocks. A lot of them are just happen to be utility companies. Um, uh, Fortis currently is sitting at about 0% for today. Over the past month, it's down 3%. Over the past three months, it's down 4%. And over the past year, it is down 13%. And over the past five years, it is up 30%. So once again, a stock that's kind of been trending downward since the pandemic. Um, I do think, once again, this is a long-term stock. It's going to be a long-term growth stock. They are a very good company. They have very good earnings, very good payout ratios, very conservative dividend, and very good fast, fastly growing dividend. This is definitely a big long-term company, and this could be representing a good buy just because of the fact that the stock is down so much. Um, I, I think a lot of this, like this um, AQN, like Algonquin Power and Utilities, Ford stock, I think these stocks are actually representing pretty good buys right now. We currently have 10 shares, which is $500 and about 2% of my portfolio. So I definitely think Fortis is definitely kind of a, they're, they're going towards these discount stocks. So they don't look good right now, but I do think like over the course of the year, they will definitely recover and they, this could be a good time to buy these stocks. Next up, we're going into some of the REITs. I bought the REITs as riskier plays just to get them because they were at dirt cheap prices. Like during the pandemic, guys, you're going to see here as we talk about some of these REITs, they got hit really hard. So if you go over the past year. We can see here, this is the tail end, actually the start of the pandemic. So this is kind of just in March. You can see H&R REIT went down 30% uh, here, just kind of sad. It went hard. We bought a couple shares at this price um, in my old portfolio before I transferred it into the TFSA. So those increases are not represented here. Um, but you can see like there's just been slowly growing over the past year. And then we saw a nice little jump here and then a bit of a dip and then a jump again. And I think the REITs are back to trending upwards. And this is why I bought them because I do think that real estate is going to continue to grow in Canada. And even though these REITs got, got hit hard, this is kind of like my riskier plays inside the portfolio. And they do have nice dividend yields. So you can't really complain about that. But we have a lot of, a lot of shares of this. Um, some of these REITs, we have 118 shares which is $1,000, we're up 4%, um, slowly been growing over the past couple of days, um, nice monthly dividend yield, and it's about 8% of my portfolio. So we do have quite a bit in REITs, but once again, the portfolio is quite balanced, so I, I have that like nice little balance risk going on, if you will, so I'm okay with that. And H&R REIT is one of the REITs, the other one is RealCan, and we'll talk about that once we get to it pretty soon here. <clears throat> Next we have is actually one of my highest performing stocks, which is Manual Life Corporation. Manulife had a very good year in 2020 and they just continue to grow and be a really good company. Over the past month, we're up 11%, which is pretty good. As you guys can see, that's reflected in our portfolio. Over the past three months, it's up 14%. Over the past year, it's up 18%. And over the past five years, they're up 43%. You can see during the pandemic here, they dropped pretty hardcore, but they had just a solid recovery. And this is because of the fact that they just have good earnings. Like for, you know, whatever reason in 2020, when the pandemic hit, they just they just kept growing. They kept growing. They kept getting those earnings. And that was a reflection of the share price, which is currently sitting. And they actually, they got hit really hard. And then it took them a little while to grow back up. So a lot of people, I think, were buying the stock to get it at that discount price. And I definitely did. I got 42 shares. Um, total value is $1,000, up 23% all time. One of my best performing stocks. And I will continue to keep buying Manulife because I still think the company is undervalued. You can see over the past five years, it's still not even trading high as high as it was at the start of the pandemic and whatnot. So I still think there's a lot of potential uh, with Manulife for sure. All right, so the next stock inside our list is going to be RealCan, and I'm gonna start speeding this up a little bit just so we can get through the video, guys. I know it's getting a little bit longer here, but you know, I talked about the REITs earlier. RealCan is one of Canada's best REITs, one of its best performing REITs. If the REITs are gonna recover, which I think they will, RealCan is gonna be one of those companies that's gonna do the best and gonna be, I think, one of the most safest and most secure companies to invest into. They're currently up about 
9% or 8% over the past month, up three, uh, 6% of the past three months. Over the past year, still down 30%, like I mentioned before, but we, we can see that recovery kind of happening pretty consistent. And over the past five years, once again, it is down 28%. This graph is just so funny to look at when you see like the big dip, but you can see the rise coming back up and that will recover over the next year or a couple of years or so. So I think this stock is extremely undervalued and it will do well. Currently has 83, we currently have 83 shares inside our portfolio, which is $1,500. Up 7.4%, which is $100, and RealCan does have a nice monthly dividend. So I think these REITs, I'm definitely going to probably start buying them um, and, and just kind of keep at it because they do have nice monthly income, and I do think they will have some solid growth. And it's definitely a little bit of a riskier buy, but I do think they're pretty solid companies to invest into. Next up we have is a company that's been doing interesting over the past little while, and this is Trans Alta Renewables. A lot of the renewable companies shot up a lot over you know, the beginning of this year, we can see over the past month, this, this company is down quite a bit, 16%. Over the past three months, it's up 4%. And the reason why is because these stocks like shot up like crazy. We can see over the past year, kind of, I think it was towards the end of 2020 or the beginning of 2021, a lot of the renewable companies just, for whatever reason, I'm not even sure the reason why myself, I think people are just moving towards renewable you know, energy and whatnot. But companies like TransAlt Renewables, for just whatever reason, just shot up a lot. And then they're kind of going back down. I think I still think this company is going to grow because they've been a fastly growing company. As you guys can see, over the past five years, they're up six, 60%, which is an average of 10% per year. So I do think this company will probably get that growth and will probably grow higher as time goes on. But they did get some really, really good growth. Um, but it kind of lost a little bit over the past little while. So we can see we're still doing okay, but we were doing much better before. Um, but I do think the long-term value of this company will grow over time. We have 26 shares, which is $500-ish. Turn uh, all-time performance to 7%, and we currently hold about 2% of it in my portfolio. Uh, but this is one we bought way back in the day, and we just kind of held. Um, it is a monthly dividend stock too, um, but it's just kind of been growing, and um, it had a lot, a lot of growth, and then it kind of went back down, but I do think it will grow long-term as a company. So um, I'm just going to kind of hold it and probably buy a couple of shares here and there. Next up, we have a Severia Corp. Um, this is definitely one of the more growth-based stocks inside my portfolio. Over the past year, Severio Corp is up 40%, which is pretty crazy. We bought most of our shares just at the start of the pandemic. And over the past five years, this company is up 177%. So definitely a big growth-based company, as you guys can see. It's been kind of up and down since the pandemic hit. But, you know, for anybody who's been holding the stock over the past couple of years, it's been doing really well. It is definitely one of my more growth-based stocks inside the portfolio, but it does have a monthly dividend, and that dividend has been growing. So, um, once again, long-term, you know, this will become, you know, a, a nice dividend company, most likely, with some really, really nice growth uh, mixed in there as well. So, we have 18 shares, which is $300, up 12%, which is $33. So, it doesn't look that much, but over time, if it keeps growing, um, and as I invest more into this company... Um, it will kind of reflect and whatnot. So it sucks because it'd be nice if you just had more money, you could put more money in, and you could get higher growth, but that's just the way it is. You know, you're gonna have some stocks that do well, some stocks that don't do well, and you're gonna kind of balance out. But over time, things will kind of trend upwards and that's where you'll get that, you know, that overall gain. Um, next up, we have a Shaw Communications. I'm not gonna talk too much about Shaw Communications because this is a company I bought um, way back when I first started this portfolio and I do hold it in some ETFs. Um, I don't think it is one of the better telecoms. Um, we see a bit of a recovery in the price over the past little while because it has been trending downwards over the past couple of years. Um, but Shaw is like, I'm just kind of switching more to companies like Telus here. As you guys can see here, Telus is kind of what I've been buying instead. And it's been kind of performing well. I kind of like the trend of Telus. If we go over the past five years, we can see Telus is up 34%. So if we ignore the pandemic, that's pretty good growth. Um, and good recovery and they've just been trending upwards. I just like them as a company consistent growth consistent consistent yields consistent dividend increases Just kind of more of my my cup of um, cup of tea if you will for investing uh, Than a company like Shaw which is kind of like all over the place kind of thing generally trending downwards So uh, we have nine shares of Telus $236 up 5% um, You know, we'll continue to buy Telus and once again, we do hold it in some of our ETFs approaching down here we have our big ETFs and my favorite dividend stock, or Canadian dividend stock of all time, TD Bank. TD Bank is probably the most biggest holding in my portfolio, I believe. Um, over the past uh, week, TD is up 1.51%. Over the past month, it's up 6%. Over the past three months, it's up 11%. Over the past year, it's up 17%. 
and over the past five years, it's up 47%, even with the pandemic. Look at this growth since the pandemic. You know, I talked about TD during the pandemic happened when everything got pushed down. Like these bank stocks are performing absolutely phenomenal. And TD is one of the best bank stocks there is in terms of earnings and growth. Um, so we've just been steadily buying this company over the past year and it's been forming pretty well. We have 28 shares inside my portfolio, total value of $2,000 up 16%. So this is a company I just want to keep buying and I'm going to keep buying because they've just been performing super well inside the portfolio. So I think TD is a great beginner stock and definitely worth checking out. So moving down here, we have some of the bigger ETFs inside of the portfolio. I'm going to ignore VYMI and XRE because these are ETFs I bought way back in the day. I'm no longer currently buying them. I'm just holding them just, you know, to see them go up and then eventually probably sell them. Um, but I don't really buy them anymore because I bought them and I, and I just don't want them inside the portfolio anymore. So I'm just kind of ignoring them. Um, the other two big ETFs we have inside the portfolio are VDY, which is a Vanguard based um, Canadian high dividend yield index. This just holds a lot of good companies. Some of the companies we already talked about um, and some other ones as well. We currently have about $6,000, which is 173 shares, up 12% inside the portfolio. And then we have VFE, which is the Vanguard S&P 500. Um, this is our other big um, ETF inside the portfolio, which is about $6,000. Currently actually seeing about zero because of the fact that US stocks got hit and the US currency is actually down a little bit. So that's kind of pushing this down a little bit. But this overall in the long term will definitely grow. If we check out VFB, we can see that over the past five years, it's trending up 80%, even with the pandemic or whatnot. So this is just a good base fund with a lot of good growth. This is where most of the growth inside the portfolio is going to come long term, as well as some good dividend stocks that are going to have some nice growth. And then we have VDY, which is once again, our Canadian base fund. Over the past five years, VDY is up 32%. It's just a well um, consistent fund that I'm going to be investing into on a regular basis. And it is one of my big ETFs that we hold inside the portfolio. So main focus once again is ETFs and then buy some e some small little individual stocks on the side um, just to have some fun with and kind of more build the portfolio more towards what I want overall, which is monthly dividend income and good stock appreciation with good dividend growth. All right, guys, so hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope it kind of helped you out. I know uh, I know a lot of you guys have been asking for a video like this, and I do like to do these videos around once a month just to give you guys a more in-depth analysis of my portfolio. Um, so let me know what you guys think in the comments. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments, and be sure to like and subscribe to the channel if you guys want to see more videos like this. Um, take care, guys. I'll put some links to some end screens if you guys want to watch more videos so you guys can check that out. But other than that, guys, have yourself a good weekend. Um, take care, and I'll see you guys later.